The warm season is coming to an end in the Northern Hemisphere after a very challenging summer with record-breaking heat waves. And with the first signs of autumn, it's time to think about moving tropical plants indoor for overwintering. But no matter how much extra plant storage space I create each year, for some reason I always end up needing more. And I'm pretty sure many of you know what I mean. Once more, this year I had to explore new possibilities for plant storage. So join me as I'm putting an unused space to work by installing shelving and grow lights in the process of greening up my bathroom. I decided to use this empty space above the toilet and bidet since it's directly below the only source of natural light in this bathroom. So the plan was to install a tall shelving unit here with its feet resting on either side of the space. This location will also benefit from the light reflected back by the mirror facing the window. None of the shelves I found online would fit right out of the box, but I found this 5 shelf ladder bookcase from GISC which would only need some slight alterations. I ordered two of these since a single unit wasn't wide enough to cover the designated area, so it was time to get down to work. All the components required for the assembly of the ladder shelving unit are contained in a single package. I opened the package using a box cutter, but apparently that's one tool you shouldn't be using for this purpose. Don't worry, I'm pretty sure that what I did next doesn't fall within the warranty terms anyway. Inside the package you can find the assembly instructions, shelf backstops, the actual shelf boards, the two shelf sides, and all the hardware required for putting it all together. Next, it was time to make the bookcase fit the space it should be in. The problem was that it couldn't be pushed all the way to the wall since the top side didn't fit because of the low slanted ceiling. I couldn't leave it like this since there was just too much space between the bookcase and the wall. The height difference was about the same as the width of the top cross piece, which I measured to be 5 cm. Luckily, the feet of the bookcase extend a bit over 5 cm under the bottom cross piece, which would allow them to be shortened to compensate for the height difference. So this is exactly what I did next. And with this, I can kiss the warranty goodbye. The first modified side piece proved to be a perfect fit, so I just had to repeat this three more times to get all the side pieces to the same height. Bare MDF absorbs moisture, and there's plenty of that in the bathroom, I seal the cut ends with two coats of water-resistant white paint. Then, after the paint has cured, I apply the self-adhesive furniture pads included in the package. With the height problem now fixed, there was one last modification I had to do. Since I wanted to connect the two shelving units together, I needed some holes for the connection screws. So I marked and drilled the required holes. With everything set, it was time to start assembling the shelves. The assembly part was almost straightforward. Each shelf board needs to be joined with the backing piece first. For this you have to insert two wooden dowels into the large pre-drilled holes. Then add the backing rail and fix everything in place with two screws. After you did this for every shelf, it's time to connect them to the vertical side pieces which is done by means of three large screws on each side of every shelf. Just as I was driving in the last screws in the first shelving unit, I realized there was an issue that could have been averted with a bit more planning. The head of the furniture connection screw prevented the shelf from being properly fastened in place because someone didn't think of drilling the screw hole just a bit higher. 
so I marked the position of the screw on the shelf and created a small recess using a Dremel tool. Not a nice sight, but it did the job, so I was finally able to properly fasten the shelves in place. Since I couldn't install all the shelves, due to the toilet and water tank being in the way, the bookcase was a bit wobbly. So I decided to use the remaining shelf backing pieces as cross rails to stiffen the structure. With the two shelving units now assembled, I connected them using the screws I bought for this purpose. One screw went in the hole I drilled at the top, and two more went in the two of the unused shelf holes. And with this, the shelves were finally installed. But there was still some more to be done before I could fill the shelves with plants. Some minor details, like covering the visible screw holes, and more importantly, assuring proper lighting. While the top shelf area located directly under the window receives more light, it gets darker as you move toward the sides of the shelf. I could use these darker spots to place some plants that do well in the shade, but I definitely have to do something about the second shelf since it gets even less light. It would be convenient to install a dedicated grow light here, like this Mars Hydro SP3000 which I covered in a previous video, however, commercial grow lights are not cheap and tend to occupy space. With the shelf height already narrowing down the list of plants that can be put here, I had to find another solution. So I decided to use LED strip lights with a color temperature close to that of natural light and a minimum CRI of 80. CRI, or Color Rendering Index, is a way to measure the ability of artificial light sources to reveal colors as you would see them under natural light. An artificial light source with a light temperature close to that of daylight and a reasonably high CRI should provide an adequate spectrum for growing plants. To find out more on building efficient DIY grow lights, check out this great video made by Shane from MyGrow. You'll find the link in the description below. Along with the LED light strip, I also ordered the PVM controller which acts as a light dimmer and on-off switch, as well as a 12 volt power supply. In case you want to build something similar, I'll leave the links to the basic components in the description below. The LED strip can be cut in 5cm increments at designated mark locations, and this was a perfect fit for my shelves which are 60cm wide. I cut 4 of these 60cm long strips, 2 for each shelf. Then I prepared short cable stops for connecting the LED strips in series and soldered them at both ends of each strip. I personally like to do a bit of soldering once in a while, but if you don't feel comfortable using a soldering iron, you can use dedicated LED strip connectors like these. Next I insulated the solder points using heat shrink sleeves and I installed crimp connectors at the free end of each wire stub. As a final check, I connected all the strips in series and added a power supply to ensure that all the wire connections are ok. With the LED strips now ready to be installed, I marked their position on the upper shelf and fixed them in place using the adhesive backing. Finally, I connected everything together and plugged in the lights through a mechanical timer which I configured with the desired on-off and current time. Then it was the moment of truth. So it seems we have light now. I know you were probably wondering why I didn't install a third shelf above the bidet since apparently there is enough space. 
Well, even though it may seem possible to use this shelf, it extends too far forward and hinders the use of the bidet and faucet. Here's a better view from the top. Not having a shelf here doesn't seem like a good option either, and I know Mrs. Oddbonsai would love to have a place for the soap bottle other than the edge of the bidet. So I came up with the idea to cut out a piece of the shelf to reduce its depth, while still being able to use the original screw holes for assembly. The original shelves are made out of melamine coated particle boards, which can chip easily unless you have the proper tools to cut them, so I decided to use a wooden board instead. I marked the length against the original shelf board and cut it to size. Then I marked the cutout and removed the marked area to bring the new shelf board to its desired shape. Next, I drill the assembly holes and prepare the new shelf for painting. I applied two coats of the same water-resistant paint I used for the shelf fit, with a light sanding in between. Then it was ready for final assembly. And this is how the new shelf looks like in place. There is a bit of a difference between the two shades of white, but I like the overall look, especially the visible wood grain. And here's a look at the final product, all ready to be filled with plants. Now it's time to clean up the display. So this is how the new plant shelves turned out. Depending on how the plants develop under the lights, I'll decide if there's a need to add an extra LED strip. Overall, I'm happy with the new plant space and I think the plants will be too. But most importantly, Mrs. Oddbonsai likes how the shelves turned out. In fact, she liked them so much that she ordered one more shelving unit to fill up the space here. Now I have to start working on installing the new shelves. So if you have any improvement ideas or thoughts you'd like to share on this plant shelf project, now is the time to leave a comment. Thanks for watching, I'm Stefan and I'll see you in the next Odd Bonsai video.